All right, looks like everybody's up here. So, hi. I'm Morgan Gengwer. I'm going to be talking about Fiddler today. It's a really awesome tool you should definitely learn. Uh, we're going to be looking at a more practical set of tools all the way up to building your own extension, but we'll get to that later. First, a little about me. I yell at people, or at least try to. I'm a student at the University of New Mexico, and I run a fake phone company. Because doesn't everybody run a fake phone company? And I could use a job next summer if anybody in the Pacific Northwest, specifically greater New Seattle area, is looking for people like me. You can yell at me at Twitter, I'm on the internet, and I have a GitHub. So we're going to talk a little bit kind of based off of this. Uh, we're going to talk a little history. We're going to talk about what Fiddler is from a fundamental perspective, what it isn't. Uh, we're going to go over some of the really basic usage, including actually spoofing requests through Fiddler. We're going to talk about modification of requests outside of, oh look, replace this with this. And then we're actually going to bake an extension. Finishing up, this talk is going to have three kind of perspectives. One from the reverse engineering and intelligence perspective, one from the attack perspective, and one from the I'm a web dev, how do I not screw this up perspective. Yeah. So a little history about Fiddler. Fiddler was started by Eric Lawrence in 2003 as a way to debug IE. Seriously, they didn't have a good way. Wireshark wasn't actually a thing on Windows at the time, and so they needed a way to hook into IE. At the time, a proxy was the way that you did that. Now, Fiddler in 2012 was picked up by Telerik along with Eric Lawrence. In 2015, Eric Lawrence went off to do work on Chrome and decided that was more fun, but Telerik gives away in the same vein as it has always been Fiddler. They sell support and will help you bake your own stuff. So what is Fiddler? It's a proxy, a lot like Midim proxy, parts of Burp Suite, etc. It's not the best, but it's really useful. It's half a web server in that it kind of spoofs things. It can return specific responses if you don't extend it. But let's more specifically talk about what Fiddler really isn't. It's not a packet capture tool. It isn't Wireshark. It's not Edercap. You are not living in TCP land. You are living in HTTP. People shove all sorts of weird shit over HTTP. Get used to it. And it's not a replacement for the tool you know. It's a gr You know your tools? Cool. Keep using them. Keep learning new tools. You probably have all these cool scripts that you kept in the background for like Minim Proxy and SSL Strip and all these cool things. Keep using those. This is one way that you can help attack specifically applications running on your local machine. So let's look at a, how it normally is used a basic everyday proxy. So I'm going to pull up Fiddler here. And I've been running Fiddler for just a couple of minutes. You will notice. Is it coming up? Oh, come on. Oh. Do we get it? Hey. All right. So this is the main interface to Fiddler. On the left, we have a large list of requests that have gone through and a tabbed view. You can actually modify this however you want. I'm not going to. Let me drag this over. Come on. And if you've ever used um, PCAP mining tools, this might look a little familiar to you. Probably a lot of them got them from this. So let's look for a good HTTP request. Ah, here. So here is a bog standard HTTP request to billing.zybotsutel.net. It was for the root. It asked for no cache. It wanted HTML and didn't have anything particularly interesting to say other than a user agent. 
we can look at that if there's post data included in this, and we'll get to post data. You can see quite a bit. Specifically, if we go over here to web forms, hey look, there's web forms. We are going to log into this fictitious building system. So over here, we're going to log in. And if the internet gods like me, we should get at least something. Come on. Now the cool thing about this is we actually can already see Fiddler intercepting the request here. At the very bottom, we actually see that we got a 502 uh, and it timed out. Fiddler is unfortunately leaky. You can turn these off, but it is very helpful if you're trying to figure out what's going on. Are the internet gods going to like me? Back. No, the internet does not like me. Anyway, if we log in, we would see post requests. I unfortunately don't have anything good, I think. Is there an, oh, here we go. So this is actually an HTTPS request, and we'll get to how that works. We are requesting a limit of 50 items from Reddit. This is, I think, bacon it running in the background. And it's asking for raw JSON. So that's cool, I guess. And this gets to how Fiddler does HTTP as intercept. If you're seeing that, you should not be seeing that. You should be seeing that. <clears throat> Fiddler can intercept HTTP requests. It does this by owning your system. It installs a local root certificate and will then be able to intercept calls coming in, fake out what, the applica what an application like Edge or anything else is seeing, and it looks like this. You got your normal HTTPS connect, which looks like a tunnel to the proxy. It says, hey, that looks like it's HTTPS. So it goes and tries to actually make a real connection that must otherwise be valid to the machine Fiddler is running on. It then mimics as close as possible a fake cert that it owns, and then it intercepts the hell out of it. This is a great way to spot cert pinning, which is really interesting. Uh, how many people here are familiar with HTTPS and how Web of Trust and all that kind of fun stuff works? How many people don't know what cert pinning does? All right, so cert pinning is a really, really simple trick. Normally, that web of trust is maintained by the system, and that's bad. Because you know who can issue certs? The government of Turkey, China, Korea. And you know, there's some nudges between the Koreas right now. That could be bad. Turkey just had this, like, coup? Fun stuff. If you want your application to be secure on a host side, you want to do cert pinning, which effectively says, I expect to have this level of validity as defined by a pedigree down to fingerprints and who signed who, when it was signed, even like beyond that sometimes. Cert pinning gives you the knowledge that when the cert is being handed over HTTPS, you're getting what you expect. This lets us get a, now that, okay, at this point, does everybody understand the basic idea of Fiddler? Kind of basic? It, it's like Midim proxy, only slightly more Windowsy. So now we can get into one of the really cool parts. Everybody likes example.com, right? Or example.net. So here we have example.net. Everybody like do it's example.net. Fiddler can do some fun stuff. So when we see oh example.com. So we'll get to, we'll talk about uh, manipulation. Basic level is the autoresponder. Uh, requests that match specific rules will be responded to with specific content. It's a really dumb web server. 
really done. You can go from like really cooked, like you can have it just say, hey, yeah, here's your page, here's your content, have fun. Or you can even do things like send 404s, 504s. You can make it redirect. You can do way fun stuff. Uh, Intermediate stuff comes into like Fiddler Script, which is a horrible amalgamation of JavaScript and VB. It's great when you don't have to worry about anything else, but it's still horrible and we'll get into why. And then you can write your own extensions that can do anything. New UI, you can build your own tunnels. There's I. There's a WPAD server that we'll talk about in a couple of seconds. So you can own the whole request, end to end, do anything you want. You can kill it. You can change every image from like ad networks into place kitten for fun. See, the autoresponder is not complex. It's a really if then why. And this is actually how, if some of you paid attention in early June, you might notice DuoSec popped a thing about uh, ASUS and their auto updaters and a bunch of other OEMs. I ended up co-discovering on the ASUS one. ASUS made no effort to actually secure, you know, run over a secure channel. Their update manifest, there was no signing or whatever, which meant that, hey, I can just say, hey, Fiddler, when you see that request, give it that XML. When you see that other request, give it that zip. 30 seconds later, I had system. So here we have example.com. Like everybody loves example.com. I'm going to turn on a rule that basically says when I go to example.com, I want you to push that. And that's just some some HTML. And then we're going to reload and bring me your dongers. Suddenly, example.com is completely different. This looks to Edge and any other application which is being run through the Fiddler proxy, just normal. It does the connect. It says, hey, I should expect this. And now it wants dongers. And now I go turn it off. And I get DNS lookup failed because my internet is off, which is going to really suck. Let's talk a little bit about Fiddler Script. This is slightly more advanced. It's jscript.net if any of you have ever encountered this horrible monstrosity. It's kind of like C Sharp. It's kind of like GS, JS. It's not like anything you've probably seen. It is JavaScript and C Sharp having a horrible bastard love child. Everything is var. This is, this is chicken typing. Everything tastes like chicken. Everything is var. Uh, weird semi-function types can exist and they just come from parallel dimensions out in the far. And you can chain them together and this is how you build custom preferences. You can mangle the UI. Um, this is a good case. The first example, if any ASPX request goes through, it will tint the entry in the Fiddle UI red. You can also add your own uh, commands. There is a command prompt interpreter, a really basic one, built into it. This is an example where you can override hosts. I want to make example.com go to evil.net. I can do that. And the application that's requesting example.com doesn't even know. But this gets into a little problem. How do you intercept modern applications? Because if you go and you go and turn on Fiddler and oh, hey, cool, neat. There is tons of modern applications on Windows 8, 8 1, 10, even Windows Phone. They'll go, whoa, buddy, that's localhost. How about no? And this is because Microsoft actually added in Windows 8 a different layer of security. Here we have the th- kind of three basic things in our user session. You have your desktop, which is where Firefox, IE, and all your other crap live. VMware, where your VMs live. And whatever other hypervisor, you could even throw, it, this is where Hyper-V lives, this is where all sorts of stuff lives that is touching the hypervisor. And then you have WinRT. WinRT is where everything else lives. If you are writing an application or attacking an application that is shipped to the Windows Store, it is living under there for the best of my knowledge. 
This is where Edge lives. This is where your bank's little like, hey, look, you can check your account balance on your Xbox now and on your phone and everywhere else. That's where that lives. I choose Edge because it's kind of neat, actually. It's stuck in this wonderful sandbox. So if you try to kind of, you know, Edge goes out, it connects to the outside world, it passes vertically through this stack, it's happy. It, the system goes, yeah, that's cool. But then you try to connect through and do this horizontal stuff. System says no. Computer says no. So what do you have to do? You have to give this a loopback exception that is then tacked on, and now you are totally free to do whatever the hell you want. Visual Studio will do this for every application you develop that is targeting the Windows platform. You can also do it through PowerShell. The easiest way is through a tool that is included through Fiddler. Uh, we're gonna, I'll show you that right now. So here we have Fiddler. This first button is called WinConfig. And, nope. And these are all applications which on the left, this first column are display names. There's a bunch of GUIDs here because I install and uninstall a lot of dev applications. But then you might see some familiar ones like Baconit, uh, Audio Creation, MIDI. Uh, here's Edge. So if you want to do anything f through Edge and Fiddler, you have to tell Windows, hey, let yourself be owned. And then you have to restart the application. Oh, that's good fun. And any app that you want to inspect web traffic that it's pushing out, this is where you go. This is how you can look at Twitter through Fiddler because that's a thing people do. So now we'll talk a little bit about extensions. Uh, who here has done .NET development? Anybody written C Sharp? Awesome. So you'll be totally familiar with this. Um, they can be written in C Sharp, VB.NET, or C++. Uh, it's actually C++ CX, which is kind of like C++ if it had C Sharp smashed on top of it. Sorry, C++ CLI. CX is uh, modern. It can intercept calls, make new calls. It has total control over the Fiddler UI. It can overhaul every single piece. They come in two basic varieties in the wild, ones that add inspectors and ones that fuck with shit. There are plenty that Telerik is like, yes, you should use these. These are awesome. These are open source and you should go use them. And there's just a DLL with some classes that need an interface. Here's some good ones for InfoSec and reverse engineering. Um, anybody who encountered Message Pack? It's a dialect of JSON that's better than uh, BSON. Then there's WCF binary messages. If anybody's ever had to debug a WCF service, this is like throwing your nails through a sheet grinder and having a bad time of it. This makes it actually really nice. I found out that it works really well when you use it with Visual Studio. You can also work around some problems with Fiddler. By default, when you intercept HTTP, the only thing that it does is says, hey, look, it's HTTP. When you do SSL unwrap, it goes, hey, that's an SSL certificate. If it comes up as being a bad SSL certificate, it goes, hey, I saw a bad SSL certificate. Do you want me to like pay attention to that one still? This is the this extension is how you can now go and look at the cert that was actually requested because it has the ownership of the SSL certificate. Here's a simple scenario of doing an actual attack with Fiddler. Who here is familiar with WPAD, Wireless Proxy Auto Detect? How many people know about SSA, uh, HTTPS to HTTP downgrade through redirect? Fun stuff. For those of you who don't know, this is a fantastic little monstrosity that was come up by Netscape back in the early days. The idea is that it's a chunk of JS that gets run by the system, by the browser, and by anything else that needs to know, hey, what proxy do I use to talk to that thing? And as it turns out, there's probably gonna be some bonus vulnerability somewhere in a JavaScript library somewhere. This is just where do I go? 
You can say, hey, you don't actually want that URL, you want that URL over there, and turn an HTTPS request into a clear text that you control through domain access. There's an extension that lets you smush a WPAD server right into Fiddler that also includes a DHCP server. And I don't know how many people's networks actively look for rogue DHCP servers. Everybody looks for rogue access points. DHCP servers are a whole lot faster when they're right next to you. And how do you get everybody to get a new lease? Well, a power outage works. That's a great option. So you can roll your own. You need Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio is now free. The Community Edition is free. Uh, you need a copy of Fiddler and a little bit of guts. You pick a language. C++, CLI, yes, is C++ smashed on top of C Sharp. C Sharp and VB are common in use. And you could theoretically, if you are one of those weirdos that uses F Sharp or IR Python, you could probably manage to cram it on top. So let's bake an extension. We'll have a small set of uh, requirements. Uh, these are what Fiddler is looking for when it loads your extension. It has to have the assembly attribute describing the minimum version of Fiddler that your extension supports. Fiddler changed some stuff back in Fiddler 2. It hasn't changed much since. You have to have a set of classes that in implement iAutoTamper, iAutoTamper 2, or iAutoTamper 3. These are really straightforward. If you just return and do nothing, you get nothing. You have to target against .NET 4 as of recent. You don't want the client profile. I found this out a while ago. And it just has to be copied to the Fiddler extensions directory. So let's build one that steals creds, yo. So this is an admittedly simple example. I'm going to see if the Wi-Fi gods love me. The admittedly simple example is that we are going to look for post requests that have user or pass as an, uh, as an argument and anything that does HTTP basic authentication. It's not going to try hard. It's up on my GitHub. It's unlicensed. So go use it. And let me get, make that better. Can everybody read that? Can anybody read that? Kind of vaguely? So, this is our Fiddler cred stealer. We are going to tamper a request afterwards. After the request is completed and everything is happy, if the request has an authorization, authorization header, we're going to go do some basic auth. And basic auth is simply you put the username and password together and base64 it. There's no protection. It's intended to be used only over secure channels. If you ever encounter this on unencrypted channels, cry. And then we do some magic using post that yells at things and if things break, we yell. And these are the things that we're searching for. If any post key comes up with that, it's like if I have a form that just says, hey, look, in, put in your username and password, it'll go do the, it'll fetch this. So let's clear this. Let's see if I have uh, internets. Hey. So here we have our fake billing. We're going to go and do, 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 do. Hey, see, we got a login. And then we look in the log. We will see. It's really hard to see there. So we got a username and a password. Dade Murphy, zero cool. Boom. We just stole some creds. But what about those corporate creds? Like we've managed to get through 
HTTP unwrap because some big CEO at some big company is sitting in a Starbucks and we've owned the SSL cert that lives on the surf, on the AP because they use like RSA 96 because they're stupid and from 1996. So what about them? Well, they go and they do a request and they're looking for their corporate expansion documentation. And if the Wi-Fi gods love me, do the Wi-Fi gods love me? Come on, Wi-Fi gods. Yo. Hey. So, we're given a basic credit auth request. So we're gonna uh, try that. And we've, we've stolen this guy's creds before. But we don't have access to that server somehow. So we'll just proxy through him because that's magic. But we wanna like catch him actually looking at corporate documents on, on that stupid Starbucks Wi-Fi and you know, Tokyo International. Let's see if I got this right. Oh. Oh. Hold on a second. So boom, we've logged, you know, our, our target is logged into their corporate documents and they're going to request, you know, th there's this big update to their billing practices they're having to do. It looks like they're having a bad time. They're having a very bad time. And, and any phone company that has a wrongful death of her collections, yeah. We come back over to Fiddler and what do we know? We've actually gotten creds. Because we logged in with bad creds, there's a good chance that it shows up, but we have legit creds. Oh, and cool bonus, Fiddler will occasionally do this. If you have any application that you want uh, signed uh, client-side certificates, it can have its own client-side certificate. So if you steal somebody's client-side certificate, Fiddler can now auto-auth for you, and you, don't even have, you can like, use curl now, as long as it can touch the proxy. So now here we go. Hey look. We now have this guy. You know, Mr. Sakamoto just got his account breached and now all their corporate documents are out on the internet. That's a bad day. So, a little about what we've uh, kind of gone over. We have Fiddler for intelligence. We can do unwrap and retrust on the local machine. There's more you can configure Fiddler to set up your phone to have a proxy and you can run everything through Fiddler. If you can tell it, hey, there's a Sox 5 proxy here, you can run it through Fiddler and you can watch it. So it's great for inspection. It's great for small bits of interception. It's not so great for anything that does cert pinning because cert pinning requires you to change the binary. If you aren't in control of the thing that's actually going it, after the, the binary itself, if you aren't in control of that executable and can't say, hey, yeah, buddy, this is totally the cert you're looking for, yeah, and you're going to have a bad time. It also doesn't do session following very well. So if you've got a long running thing that's making web sockets requests on a regular basis, 
it's kind of hard to filter sometimes and that's why the jscript.net is there so that you can build all your little filters. For manipulation, it's great for impersonating an API. This is how uh, dead update happened. This is how ASUS learned that you shouldn't let motherboards go and request the internet unencrypted to get BIOS updates. It's great for making applications crash because you can put anything you want. You want an application that's supposed to be getting a 200 OK and then a bunch of binary data, but then you go, hey, buddy, that's 200 OK, but we're not, we're, we're giving something else. You can totally fuzz things with it. And it's great for making pictures from Imgur replaced with Place Kitten. It's not going so great for anything that requires sessions or the more complex exploits and things that aren't HTTP or HTTPS. For developers, this is its actual intended purpose. Inspecting and auditing traffic. What is a process doing? What is a machine doing over the web? It's great for testing APIs. One thing I didn't quite touch on, there is a lot of power here in the composer. If you need to work with an API that you aren't familiar with, this will let you make arbitrary requests, give them back, and then you can look through here too. Fiddler knows this. You can make API requests for like Shodan. And then watch as it fails. Where is it? Boom, so we're requesting something from Shodan from within Fiddler. You, you could even do whatever with this. You want to write an extension that says, hey, I made a request to a thing. What's Shodan know about it? You could either do it by hand or write some JScript and, or write an extension. And if you write an extension, go tell Telerik about it. They'll pimp you out. Oh, here. It succeeded. We got a 200. And we can inspect it. We got three bytes. They probably told us to go die in a fire. Yeah, okay, so it was a score, I think. Yeah, that must have been the honey score for 4222. JSON is astoundingly easy to read with this. So here's this big block of JSON. Boom. There's your format of JSON in a tree. It'll also do XML. Uh, you can see authentication. We wrote a plugin to do this, but to explicitly try and steal it. Also, www authenticate doesn't cover basic authentication in all cases. So yeah, y'all y'all are awesome, and you should buy me a beer or not. I don't know. Thought I was awesome. Any leg any last minute questions? Because we got what? Yeah, we got some time. We got fifteen minutes. Um, so I was playing around with it um, on Linux, trying to get it to work uh, the other night, and I ran into a couple funny things. Like I was able to get the SSL to work, but or, like, the only if I ran it against Firefox. Whenever I ran it against Chrome, even though I added the cert as an authority, Chrome still kept rejecting like the. Chrome on Linux does not look at the local SSL key store. It has its own. Yeah. It ignores everyone and it's boi baked in. I believe there's a way you can make it work. I'm not sure. Go yell at Telerik. Cool. They actually probably want to know that. Yeah. Anybody else? Bueller. Um, curious what, like, well, I think I saw some during this that jumped out at me, but just like, so a lot of what I kind of wanted to do with it, I realized that, well, I can already do this through like the networking tab in Chrome, like I can already inspect headers, I can already do a lot of this. What's kind of the killer feature of this for like a web dev type? Why would I use this over just using the networking tab in Chrome to inspect my traffic? So the killer feature here, 
comes not exactly when you're trying to attack it specifically Chrome, but let's go look at Fiddler for a second. It's not totally intended just to look at browsers. You'll see a lot of stuff. Out here, this is Visual Studio phoning home. This is what you would use to understand, well, what is Visual Studio doing? It's actually pushing a bunch of JSON up, talking about telemetry and, you know, what you're doing, et cetera. It's the NSA. No. Um, it's trying to understand what extensions people are using. I've actually looked into this. There's also others. Uh, you might notice PowerPoint has been kind of poking out to the internet. Here's an update. Let's go look at that text view. Here's an update. I have a tool called WinCompose to actually look at the compose key on my keyboard, which is actually right menu, which allows me to type funny characters. I now know that WinCompose is doing its update check over clear text, and it looks like it's trying, yeah, it's checking MD5s and SHA-1s, but it's doing it over clear text. No, uh, n nothing. You could totally try and own people who run, run tools like this. This is the use case. Uh, for instance, when I was looking at the ASUS live update software, that's how I noticed the problem, is that every hour I would get a request out from live update to liveupdate01.asus.com. And I'm like, I wonder what happens if I tell this thing, hey, there's nothing there. Okay, it does nothing. What if I hand it garbage? Hey, look, that crashed. Awesome. And that's one of the main use targets of Fiddler. Anything else? So Fiddler is a rather set of, strange set of tools. It is a fantastic thing to actually go out and learn. It runs pretty well on Linux. If you've got mono installed, you can debug over the internet. I have actually, other times, some of the best stuff is making it so that IoT devices will pick up WPAD, and now you see what the IoT device is requesting out. Um, I believe there was an attack on a web-connected projector that used Fiddler to understand the, the protocol, and they built a small little extension to break out the protocol itself. Anybody else? Cool. Thanks, guys. You're awesome. <laughs>